G'day, let's have a look at this Milwaukee circular saw. This is the brushless version, so the fuel version, which just means it's got a brushless motor. So I think this module here is just gonna be a motor. And I don't think this actually has any gearbox inside it because as you turn the blade, you can hear those little almost teeth click. So that's just gonna be the different poles of the brushless motor. So we'll see, we'll open it up and have a look, but I don't think this will this will have any gearbox in it. So on the front here, you've obviously just got your blade guard, the, the bottom rail there, and then you've got the dust exhaust out here as well. So I'm not sure if we'll really dig into any of the front here because it's just gonna be this cover and then just a plate, but on the bottom or on the underside here is where we've got a whole bunch of screws. So that's probably just gonna take this whole clamshell off and we'll be able to see the inside workings of it. So everything from the motor to the controller to the switch and, and that assembly there. So I'll just get st stuck straight into it and open her up. So that just takes this cover off here and we just got a, I guess half of that clamshell. So half of the handle and the whole mechanism there. It's really good to see on the front here, we have a lot of ribbing. This here just ensures that we've got a lot of structural integrity at this point, and this is extremely rigid. So, because it's got that handle in the front, this half here and then that half just there. So you do want this to be really nicely reinforced, which, which that is, and there's absolutely no wiggle in this. I can't bend it at all. And that's great because you're gonna be putting a lot of force and pressure on this. Even the rest of the case is there's very little flex in this if I try to twist it, which again is good. We've got GF30, so glass fiber reinforced 30%. So this plastic is gonna be really, really sturdy, which is which is great to see. You don't want much flex in this. You want a little bit, so it obviously flexes and it absorbs some of that vibration as well of the tool, but you need these cases to be nice and solid. So really, really good machining on, on that injection molded part that they've done. So. Good to see that and as always with Milwaukee we've got that red hard plastic and then we've got this black over mold that's a rubbery it's got more of a rubber feel to it so it's it's better for gripping all right and then inside here so we obviously with this whole black thing is the motor I thought this was going to be exposed so we could have a better look at it but I might be able to pull this off a little bit more and, and get it exposed a bit better but we'll see how we go I'll have a look at this first so this is part of the safety mechanism so when you're holding it you got to use your thumb to push this down and then you can actually push the trigger in so that's just got a little tactile switch push button switch just up there that just acts as that electrical safety so that'll go back to the actual main board and and tell it that yes that is pressed so when the main switch gets pressed that can actually work fine and i think it is also so it is an electrical and a mechanical lock. So you can't actually press the trigger without this being pulled up. So as you pull that up, then you can pull the trigger and you can hear that really nice positive click. Whereas if that's not pushed down, then you can't actually actuate that. So that's a good point actually. This probably doesn't need to be there, although it would be just telling the board that you've pressed it or not, maybe for some other reason than, than just a pure safety one. But then just below that, we've got the actual main switch. So this is going to be taking the full force directly from the battery, going through this, turning it on, and then sending it to the motor. So it's good. It's got nice beefy wires, and it's got a really nice big diode there, which is great to see. So when this is turned off and the motor turns off, it still has a little bit of momentum. So it will send power back through the switch into the module. But that's what that diode there is just to stop that from happening. So it just stops that back EMF. And you can see the way this switch actually actuates. I'm going to have a little bit closer. This switch here, actually, when I push this in, it actually pulls this little channel up here. So you can, you can see that. So that actuates a little rod that then goes in here. And then this here is where the actual switch is going to be. So that's interesting. They've probably just done that because of the size of the switch. This would take a lot of current through it. So they want a really nice beefy one and it probably just turned out better to have it down here then, then try to squish it in that assembly after this is pressed and then that way with that actuation of the top that's how the safety works here so this little safety bar down here just prevents that rod from being pushed upward so maybe it's part of all that whole safety assembly there and that's what they've gone with this and then here so this is where the battery clicks clicks right on so with the battery terminals 
on the other side is where the PCP is going to be that's just going to be controlling this. And all we can see is just an exposed little capacitor and I'm not sure what that is, but probably was just some pins to either test or program this board. And the whole thing is just glued in with this hard epoxy. So that's good that all of the components there on the electrical side are, are protected. There probably won't be much switching going on with this board because it doesn't have any main wires that, that feed the motor. So I think there'll be an assembly, uh, there'll be another PCB over there with the MOSFETs to actually control the motor. And this one here is just going to be a smaller, smaller computer to read it and maybe communicate back to the battery or so on. We've got this ribbon cable here as well, which will have a whole bunch of different contacts that, that has some sort of communication between this battery battery PCB and then the PCB that's going to be inside that motor assembly. And coming back on all these wires here as well, we've just got a ferrite bead there as well, just to act as a bit of a filter for, for any high frequency noise that comes back on that line to the actual control module. So I can see a few more screws in there, so I'll just undo that and see if we can get further into this. All right, there we go. So that took quite a bit of time to actually take that case off because of the way I'll well, take this case off here, which is just a plastic. It does seem to be, what's the part on that there? GF50. So it's PA66 material and then GF50. So we've got 50% glass fiber reinforced in here compared to 30 in the case. So this is much sturdier part, which it is. It, it is very, very sturdy if you push that. And that, that whole case opens up in half and that's what holds the motor in place. So we've got this whole motor here, which is directly mounted to the other side. Actually, no, I was wrong. So it does have a little gearbox, but I think it just has a single step down. So this, is, this isn't this is exactly in the center. It's kind of, it's really hard to show this on camera. And I got these wires here that I don't want to rip off because this whole case stays on them and it's just a pain to get the whole thing off. So it does actually come in, I'm not sure if you can see it on this side, but the, mo the motor itself, the motor shaft comes in here and then we've got the main shaft for the blade here. So there's most likely just going to be a big spur wheel here and then a small spur wheel on the motor. And that's just what's going to be transferring that torque over to this. So there will be a little bit of reduction, but not significant there. So looking at the motor on this side, all we can really see is just that stator outside and then the little fan down here that just as that spins, it pushes the air outwards and sucks fresh air in through the motor and then obviously spits that out, the hot air outside. And as I was saying before is that that was a really small PCB near that battery. So over here on top of the motor is where we've got the actual control circuit for it. So that's a really neat design. This is super heavily coated in conformal coating. The whole thing is just very nice and shiny. I'll bring it a little bit closer. There we go. It's very nice and shiny. Obviously, it's got a whole bunch of sawdust on it because I have used this tool a few times, but it's really nice board. It's got six different MOSFETs on here and they're all going to be switching off. So they're going to be responsible for two of them are going to be responsible for one phase each. So the, the two corresponding coils on the inside of that motor, which is hard to see, but it's going to be exactly the same as the other motor. So for example, the, the motor inside this impact, it's going to be the same as that, just obviously a hell of a lot bigger. So I'll put a link to this video if you want to see how that motor actually works because it comes apart really nicely on this tool. I'm not going to go digging into this one any further because if I do, all of these screws have that coating on it. So if I do take any of this off, it will damage that coating and I want to keep keep it as protected as possible, obviously without waterproof. So but what I was saying is we've got the MOSFETs here. So I think this will actually be the brain box. So where that battery terminal is, that is going to be the brain box of it, communicating through all of these little ribbon ribbon wires here into this PCB here to actually control these different MOSFETs, which would then be doing the switching to actually control the phase there. But there would just be one switch, one speed because this doesn't have different speeds, it just has on and off. So it would just send that signal onto this, this would do the switching and then go straight into the motor. The, the benefit of having this close by is you can have the one PCB because this is gonna have Hall effect sensors on the underside to actually sense the position of that rotor within the stator and to actually turn that motor around. So it's just neat to have all of that on that one circuit here. 
And the other thing is as well is there's going to be a lot of airflow going through this PCB or from the top of it down into the motor. So these electrical components here are always going to get clean, cold air coming in and then the motor will get the warmer one that gets expelled out. But the PCB is what's more sensitive anyway than, than the motor itself. The performance of the motor will just slightly degrade with, with heat, but it can get quite hot before there's really any issues, any issues to that. All right, so that's it. I'm not going to dig much more further into that because I don't want to mess with that gearbox and get some of this sawdust in it. But hopefully that explains how this works and, and you've seen inside this. It's it's all very good quality build, especially especially this ribbing up here or this reinforcement on, on the case. I'm really impressed with that. Really nice and sturdy, sturdy plastic used and very good components all around. So good on Milwaukee again for designing another great tool. So thanks very much for watching. Hit that like button, subscribe if you want to see more of this sort of stuff. And as always, have a great day. Cheers.